there's no doubt that a periodized approach to endurance training delivers consistent results. But are there certain types of periodization that are more effective than others? Over the past few years, there's been an ongoing debate about whether polarized or pyramidal training delivers a line of best fit for most athletes. Let's look at both methods and see which you might want to implement. Well, a fascinating study set out to investigate just that, and the findings might surprise you. Let's dive into the heart of the matter. The study was set up to explore the effects of four different training periodizations. Now you might be asking, what exactly is training periodization? It's essentially a strategy that structures training into specific phases, each with a particular focus on improving different aspects of performance, a bit like a roadmap guiding you towards peak performance. For this study, the researchers used two different training intensity distributions during a 16-week training block with well-trained endurance runners. These distributions were the pyramidal periodization, often shortened to PYR, and the polarized periodization, or POL for short. 60 well-trained male runners were divided into four groups. Each group followed a different training routine, one with a PYR periodization, one with a pole periodization for the full 16 weeks, one that started with PYR and switched to POL following eight weeks, and the last one that started with POL and switched to PYR after eight weeks. Therefore, the two groups that switched their periodization models had eight weeks of each. Now, if you're wondering what on earth these periodizations are, don't worry. In simple terms, a pyramidal periodization involves a high volume of low-intensity training, a moderate volume of medium-intensity training, and a low volume of high-intensity training. A polarized periodization, on the other hand, involves a high volume of low-intensity training and a low volume of high-intensity training, with very little medium-intensity training. The interesting point here is that the total training load was kept constant across all groups, so the only thing that changed was the distribution of training intensities. Now, on to the results. The runners were tested at the beginning, middle, and end of the intervention for body mass, velocity at 2 and 4 millimoles per liter of blood lactate concentration, absolute and relative peak oxygen consumption, and 5-kilometer running time trial performance. The results showed significant improvements in relative peak oxygen consumption, velocity at both 2 and 4 millimoles per liter of blood lactate concentration, and 5-kilometer running time trial performance. However, the group that switched from PYR to polarized distribution showed the largest improvement in all these variables approximately 1.5 to 3% across all the tests. Interestingly, no changes were observed for body mass, absolute peak oxygen consumption, peak heart rate, lactate peak, and rating of perceived exertion. So, what does this all mean? Essentially, each intervention effectively improved endurance surrogates and performance in well-trained endurance runners. However, the change from PYR to polarized distribution maximized performance improvements with relative peak oxygen consumption being the only physiological correlate. In conclusion, this study provides compelling evidence that manipulating the distribution of training intensity can lead to significant improvements in endurance performance. So, whether you're a seasoned runner or a newbie, it's worth considering how you distribute your training intensities. It could be the key to unlocking your full potential. Comment on your own periodization strategies and what success you have had. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe for the latest videos.